So let's say we are looking at a segment of a blood vessel okay, of diameter 2 or not. Okay. With aging, there might be flat deposition on all that along the walls of the blood vessel and the radius might slightly decrease. Right? So R0 would decrease. In this video, we are going to quantify the effect of changes in radius on what happens to flow, what happens to pressure and all that on the long term pathologies that this decrease in radius would lead to. We will do so by quantifying what the resistance to flow is in a particular blood vessel. So I am going to start with one major assumption okay, which is based on the Poiseuille flow that is if you look at any particular cross section the velocity is going to be parabolic. Okay. So at this point the velocity at the center is going to be the maximum as we go towards the edges it is going to be 0. Okay. And this profile has a cylindrical symmetry that is if you look at this cross section okay, the velocity profile varies with radius but it does not depend on the angle theta. Okay. So I am going to make start with this assumption and try to derive the expression for R. The standard way to do this is to start with the conservation of momentum equation, get the appropriate differential equation, solve it, apply the boundary conditions and all that. I will skip all those. Instead, I will try to use common sense and intuition so that we get insights the process of deriving that expression. Okay. With that, okay. So let's look at this particular cross section alone. Okay. So we have the center of the blood vessel or not here. Okay. The radius is measured from the center. And then the edges of the blood vessel are denoted by R0, which is the radius of the blood vessel, and minus R0 are the bottom side. Okay. So with this, we started saying that velocity at each point is going to be a parabola. Okay. So let us try to describe that function. So velocity is proportional, it is a parabola, so somehow it is proportional to r naught square r square. So essentially it is a quadratic term. We have, we have this particular form because at r equal to r naught the velocity is 0. Similarly r equal to minus r naught the velocity is 0. So the quadratic form is specifically this. So let us add the other things that will show up in this expression. First thing, so let us look at this maximum value, okay. That would depend on a couple of things. First, the pressure gradient that we apply to the blood vessel. If we apply a higher pressure gradient, okay, is the velocity going to be V max, is it going to increase or decrease? It will increase, okay. So velocity will be proportional to the pressure gradient that is there in the segment of interest. Okay. If we vary L, pressure gradient is delta P over L. Okay. So for a longer pi, if we apply the same pressure, velocity is going to be lesser. For that reason, this is inversely proportional to the length. Similarly, if the flowing fluid has a higher viscosity, this profile is going to be shorter. For that reason, it is going to be inversely proportional to the viscosity mu. Okay. And the actual proportionality constant here is 4. With this, okay, let us try to write down the expression for flow. The idea is this. We know Q times R is delta P. So try to get the expression for flow using this velocity assumption. Okay. So flow is nothing but I am going to fast forward this as much as possible. Okay. So take velocity at, at any particular radius r, integrate that from 0 to the whole radius, we will get the total flow. So velocity at a particular circumference okay, is 2 pi r and integrate this over the center to the maximum radius r0. Okay. So let us plug in this expression for velocity 
and actually calculate this integral. Now I'm going to fast forward this. Okay, so doing the integration, we essentially end up with the flow rate is equal to this term. Okay, so this term is, of course, P naught minus P1 is the pressure gradient. Okay, by comparing with this expression, we know the radius is the inverse of the constant over here. Okay, so we get the radi the resistance. I mean the resistance of course, okay. The resistance is inverse of pi r naught power 4. Okay, so this is the expression for the resistance of a blood vessel. Okay, so the reason to quantify this is to gain more insights. So now let's answer the original question we started with. Okay. So as if the radius happens to decrease, okay, say or not decreases, okay, say due to fat deposition or any of those things, the resistance is inversely proportional to the fourth power. The first thing, if or not decreases, resistance is going to increase because it's inversely related. Second, because the relation ship is R naught power 4, even minor changes here, okay, is going to drastically increase the resistance to flow. What would happen because of that? Let's use the flow pressure relationship, okay. If the resistance drastically increases for the given pressure gradient, Okay, flow will drop. Essentially, R is delta P over Q. If we fix the pressure gradient, flow is going to decrease. It's inversely proportional. Flow is going to decrease. But say this thing actually happens, all our body parts needs the same amount of blood flow. Okay, so the flow, flow ideally should not decrease. So how would the body react, okay? The body is going to drive up the pressure gradient. So the pressure in the blood vessels is going to increase a lot, which is also known as hypertension. So let me summarize whatever we saw here. We quantified the resistance for flow in a blood vessel. We noticed resistance is proportional to radius power 4, inversely proportional to radius power 4 and because of this power 4 relationship here, even minor changes in the radius, say due to flat uh, fat deposition and all that, it's going to drastically increase the resistance, okay. Once the resistance increases, all different parts of the body needs to get the same amount of flow. So in order to keep the flow from decreasing, the pressure gradient will drive up which will usually result in diseases like hypertension. Okay, with that, I will conclude this video. Is there a different way to characterize the effect of such, say, fat deposition in the arteries? The answer is yes. Okay, it is by quantifying something known as pulse wave velocity. Okay, essentially, as there is fat deposition along the walls, okay, the stiffness or the material properties of the arteries would change that would affect the flow characteristics and that can be quantified as well as measured experimentally. So we will look at that in a different video, okay. I will see you again with that one and more videos. Thanks for watching and share it with friends if you find this interesting.